SHS this month, first edition. I'm here with the great Meet Patel. Uh, we have a lot of exciting uh, shows for you today, and I hope you enjoy. We have uh, a football interview with Jared and Boomi, interviewed by Brianna. Hello, this is your reporter Brianna Moreno, and behind the camera we have Joe Rush. Today we have Boomi Fabican <laughs> from the SHS varsity football team. So let's just get straight into it. What are some of the, of the off-season conditioning you have done over the summer? Well, um, this this season coaches went all out. They brought in one of our past uh, captains. His name's uh, Coach Ivo, and he he actually has like a degree in like all kinds of like sports met. Not sports medicine, but like, just like athletic training, stuff like that, like training kids. Okay. And he's he's just been working this hard. Like, all this is the strongest I've ever, like, gotten in that amount of time in my life. All right. And what does your daily diet consist of? Um, carbs. I'm trying to, like, gain weight. So definitely, like, carbs, all kinds of, like, healthy foods, lots of water, lots of Gatorade, just stuff like that. And how do you feel coming into the new 2022 football season? I feel great. I feel like everyone around me has been working hard. Everyone around me has been pushing me to work harder. I feel that um, we're going to win a lot of games. We're going to have a lot of fun. And we're just going to work hard. Okay. That's fun. After the win last Friday against Norwood, what are some things that went to plan and what would you have done differently? Um, I feel like... I feel like blocking assignments was definitely part of, um, like, something that we could have worked on, something that we could have done better. Uh, I feel like, I feel like we executed well, but there's always, like, room to get better, mm -hmm. and blocking assignments was definitely one of them. On special teams, on offense, like, definitely. Okay. And last year, you beat Braintree 27-26. Do you think they'll be an easy team to beat again? I don't think we play an easy team to beat this whole year. Mm -hmm. I think that um, we shouldn't take any team lightly. I'm not, and I'm not saying it's a game that we can't win, but I'm saying that it's definitely going to be a hard game to play. And in your opinion, what makes an excellent football player? Uh, discipline, showing up to practice all the time. Mm, I would say, I would say those two things. Yeah. Just working hard. And what do you think is the most important aspect of being a member on the team? Accountability. Just like, if you have something that like you're not good at, or if you have something that you're bad at, that's fine. But as long as you're like showing up to practice every day, and um, as long as you're like always there, then you can get better with your teammates. But if you're just not coming to practice, you're not working hard, then you can't really, like, get better. Your your teammates are relying on you, so. Okay. Yeah. That's valid. So thank you for taking the time to answer these questions, and I hope you guys have a great season this year. Thank you. Hello, this is your reporter, Brianna Moreno, and today we have... Jared Dodger. ...from the SHS of our city football team. All right. So what are some off-season conditioning you have done over the summer? Uh, during the off season, we had um, double sessions, and for the first session, we would like we like do weight room things and like lift, and you know just get stronger. And then during the second session, we would have more like conditioning and running things where we would like sprint a hundred yards or sprint fifty yards, and then we would also have like agility drills to do with the team. Well, that's a lot. <laughs> okay. So, what does your daily diet consist of? If you have one. I don't really have a diet. You only like carbs or something? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I do try to get a lot of carbs in because, you know, I'm trying to still gain weight during the season. So, you know, for dinner, I ask my mom to make pasta more often than not, but usually I'll just eat like chicken and rice pretty much. Okay, and how did you feel coming into the new 2022 football season? Um, I felt good because we have a lot of returning players that are going to have a big part of the team. They're going to be a big part of the team, my fault. And um, I just think that we have a 
people and the coaching staff to be good this season. Okay. And after the win last Friday against Norwood, what are some things that went to plan and what could you have done differently? Um, you know, we really just followed our game plan and I think that we executed it really well. There were some points in the game where we had a couple injuries, so, you know, things went bad. But for the most part, we were able to work our game plan and just, you know, do good when we did it. <laughs> And last year you beat Braintree 27 to 26. Do you think they'll be an easy team to beat again? Absolutely not. They're a D1 program, so you know they're very good, and um, they have returning players from last year, like their quarterback and one of their offensive skill positions, and that are really good. And they also have new players that are also going to be very good for them. So you know it's just going to be a tough game, and uh, we just don't, we just have to treat every game like we're playing. The Patriots, pretty much. So we just have to go out there and not think it's going to, we can't take it lightly, pretty okay. much. And in your opinion, what makes an excellent football player? Um, the guys around them, to be honest. If you can't be a good football player if you don't have a good team, you have to, um, the guys around you are going to be the guys pushing you and making you work harder every day. So if you have a good supporting cast, and I think that'll make you better and it'll push you more. Okay. And what do you think is the most important aspect of being a member on the team? Um, really just showing up, being there, supporting your teammates, whether they're on or off the field. Um, you know, that's really what we're about. You know, everything's about teamwork. I know I'm saying it a lot, but I mean, once you're a team, I think everything else will just work out for you. All right. Well, those are all of our questions. Thank you for taking the time, and I hope you have an excellent season this year thank you very much we're on to our drink podcast that included me joe rush miguel mills and brianna moreno all right welcome to our podcast today i'm here with joe charlie brianna and today we're talking about some of the best drinks of all time um to get us started let's talk about water since we were talking about that earlier you know the age-old question does all water taste the same charlie let's start with you yes all water tastes the same like Dasani, Fiji, tap, all taste the same. You can't tell me it tastes different. Uh, Charlie, I'm going to have to disagree with you. I, I think that, like, maybe maybe it doesn't taste the same, but I think the quality of water, like, it varies. Like, it if does. someone puts a Dasani bottle in front of me and, like, a Fiji bottle in front of me, I'm going to be able to know which one is which. Well, I think, I think it, they're pretty different. So you're personally. telling me. They okay. taste the same. You're telling me you okay. couldn't you couldn't differentiate from Poland Springs and Hose Water, because <laughs> that's blasphemous to say. Uh, but you don't drink Hose Water, do you? I've never drank Hose Water. Hose Water is tap, tap water. T- tap hose water. water is tap water. Tap buddy. water tastes the same as Dasani or Fiji. But Brianna, what, what's some your opinion? waters are just crisp, you know. They mm-hmm. just like the taste, flavor, you know. That's gross. Dude. You can't just do <laughs> what? Yeah, Charlie, hose water is tap water. <laughs> okay, tap water and Fiji water taste the same. No, Ooh. it doesn't. That's okay, so you're telling me if you had, like, the most expensive water in front of you and, like, what, Dasani? I don't think the price matters. No, it doesn't. Water. No, but just, I'm just, like, saying, like, Fiji water, like, smart yeah. water. You're going to go for the Dasani one? I mean, it doesn't matter which they one I go like for. Fishy. They taste the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not quality water. All right, but next up, sports drinks. Gatorade, Body Armor, Powerade, all that stuff. What do you guys think is the best, best brand, best flavor? Uh, Gatorade. Yeah. For I'm, sure. I'm going like to go Gatorade yeah. on this one. That's fair. I would say Body Armor, just because I like the, the coconut taste of Body Armor. I hate coconut. Very I exotic. hate coconut. <laughs> we are. I don't think I, I will say, I understand where you're coming from with Thank Body you. Armor, but I think Gatorade is just... Gatorade's a staple. It's, it's just a staple of the game. game. It's a like classic game. Yeah, yeah. No, you can't go wrong with they Gatorade. Ah, uh, nah, you can't no, you, go no, very, yes, can. you can. You can't. You they can't. They got a bunch of the, options. The question, yeah. the question is, what's the best Gatorade, though? Yeah, yeah, what's the best Gatorade? I would probably say, um, like, the white one, Glacier Cherry. Okay, you are... <laughs> the, Glacier Cherry's the did best. anyone ever... Did, a no. solid, like, cold Glacier Cherry is probably... No. No, cherry. I can't. Lemon lime. Lemon lime. Lemon lime's that a classic. That's good. That's a classic. Glacier Cherry's... Glacier Cherry's... I would never drink. Tired. It's very drank some yesterday, actually. What about you? I wouldn't What's drink that. Favorite? What's your favorite type of game? Lemon lime or... Mm, I mean, you also can't go wrong with the Fruit Punch one. So... It's a classic. It is a classic. Fruit Punch. All right, moving on. 
That's sodas. Mountain Dew. <laughs> I don't drink soda that much, but... Mountain Dew. No, Mountain Dew is... When you break it down, it's really just carbonated Gatorade. That well, you said best. That is the best soda, in my opinion. I kind of. I don't Sprite's know. a staple, though. Sprite is definitely the good. The McDonald's Sprite. Mm. Be hitting different. She's, I'm she's not gonna lie. She's onto them. I don't know. I might. I'm kind of going. I might go root beer. Oh, I could. I like a nice go. I could. I could go root beer. Guy off the that, that is a that is a, <laughs> that, is a, that is a solid take. Root beer. It's not a bad take. Root beer is a go-to drink. No, Barbecue. No. You can't go wrong with the root Bro, beer. Bro, can never go wrong. Cream soda is better than root beer. That is so. Bad and no, you can not. have a root beer float too. Like you can have a cream soda float. All right, but who okay, walks but into a store and asks for a cream, cream soda, soda float? Who asked for a root beer float? Me. That's better than. No. Yeah, we can. Evident, Charles. That's moving on. That's budget friendly drink. I'm talking like under two bucks here. Yeah, under I, two bucks? I think there's only one correct I, answer for I this. I think I'm thinking the same thing as you. It's got to be Arizona. Arizona. 99 cents. You can't. You can't. And no, it. that's a. Oh, that's, there's mean, a ton of different I, flavors, too. I, I, it's not actually I don't like 99 iced tea. cents, though. I don't like yes, iced tea. It is. No, it's <laughs> not. There's no tax on it. I don't like it's not ninety nine cents. There's no way. Has you ever? Have you never bought an Arizona? <laughs> I I go I go a uh, a monster. <laughs> monster is. I have, I hate Arizona. Iced tea is terrible. Wait so wait wait. So but going back like to what she said, bit. have you never? No, I don't like iced tea. But have you wait, never what? bought it Arizona? No. no, because it's iced There's tea. No way. Yeah, I wouldn't. You no, know, it's buy... ninety nine cents, right? It's not actually ninety nine cents. I swear. Either way. It's not it's I don't lie. Me is it actually? Yeah. 99 yeah. cents that's, or that's free. That's the whole branding. No chance. 99 cents or free. I would not buy it or take it. Okay, that's a bit wild. That's wouldn't egregious. Just, if someone just handed you an iced tea, a flavored iced tea, you wouldn't take it? No. I hate iced tea. Why would I take it? You hearing this right now? It's outrageous. But next topic, our final topic, the best fruit juice of all time. Fruit juice. Fruit juice. Kool-Aid. That's not a fruit juice. <laughs> Yo, it's no. Fruit juice. I'm gonna just, no. just like like actual like <laughs> like a fruit that can be squeezed Uh-oh. into a juice. I'm gonna I'm gonna just go. I'm gonna just go with apple juice. I agree. Apple Aye, that's juice. that's valid. Apple orange juice is valid too. Orange juice is an old person drink. I will die by that. What it's an old person drink? It is trash. That's why you have no vitamin C in you. <laughs> it is trash. You lack vitamin C. <laughs> orange juice is trash. It's not that trash. And no, then, it's not. Orange juice. Cranberry is better than apple juice. Oh, what? <laughs> no, that's oh. actually disgusting. That is a crazy. You guys have never had the cranberry that's mango? Actually... <laughs> the ocean spray cranberry mango? No. The cranberry mango? I have cranberry raspberry, but not cranberry mango. Okay, who drinks cranberry raspberry? Who drinks cranberry mango? No offense. Cranberry juice sells better than apple juice. No but chance. I don't it do- it literally does. Juice. That's gross. Carlos told me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I don't know. Shout out, Carlos. Apple juice is a staple. Okay, what about like exotic fruit juices? Ex- Ex- exotic. Mango. Like tropical, tropical. Mango. <laughs> Mango is good. Pomegranate, too. Oh. There's oh, not pomegranate. Peach pomegranate. juice. It's just expensive. Pomegranate. Peach juice. I don't think peaches are tropical. A peach? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so i think that's that wraps it up but thank you for watching uh, we hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time uh next we have volleyball interviews with kiara scardina and kenna o'donnell hi my name is kenna o'donnell i'm here with kiara scardina to ask about volleyball questions hello how's the season going so far this year I think we're doing pretty good. So we've played three games so far. Today is going to be our fourth, and we've won one of them. Um, there's a lot of chemistry on the court, so I'm really excited about what we're going to look like this year. Good. Um, what kinds of strength and conditioning do you do in the off season? So we do summer league, and then we do captain's practices. Um, in the winter, we do clinics as well for just like younger kids, so we're always playing together constantly throughout the whole season. Um, as one of the captains of the volleyball team, how do you show leadership on the court? Um, I like to encourage my teammates to do their best and motivate them during practice and games to just work as hard as they can. What are some of your key players this year? Um, I would say our key players this year are Patrick Oliveira, Alyssa Edwards, and Maya Ashu. They all are extremely competitive and really good players, and they really put up a fight on that court. What are the chances that you guys make it to tournament this year? Um, as of right now, I hope we make it, and I hope that we – can make it up there, but I think right now we're looking pretty good for that, so. Good. 
All right. Thank you, Fikira, for joining us. Back to SHS this month. Here's another informative segment. Great sports takes in uh, the podcast that included Meet Me, Joe Rush, and Jake Berry. I'm Joe Rush, and I'm here with Charlie, me, Jake, and we're here to talk about everything in sports. So our, our first topic today is, who do you guys think will win the NBA championship this year? To the LA Lakers, uh, they're kind of going crazy right now. Uh yeah, they they're just a good overall team. Yeah. Uh personally I I might take a little bit of a different approach here. I would say the, the Philadelphia seventy sixers, you know. You know, James Harden, he's been in the lab in the off season, he took a pay cut, you know. They brought in PJ Tucker, he's a good addition and I think if Joel can stay healthy, he got an M V P season and lead them to a championship. It's it's a lethal lethal combo they have out there. What about you, Charlie? I'm going to go with the Bucks. They're always a good, solid team. You know, never bad, never good, but always figure out how to get deep in the playoffs. What about, what about you, Jake? You know, I got two options, but my main option right now is the Clippers. Just because Kawhi Leonard is coming back, Paul George is coming back. Two, that's probably like the best like backcourt in, in the league, if I'm being honest. Yeah, it's two solid score. defenders, scoring abilities there. They got a ton of role players. Like They got Batum, they got Reggie Jackson. They got John Wall now. He's coming back from injury. I think it's going to be a solid team. Great defense. Great offense. A ton of, a, a ton of a playoff experience, too. That's all I got to say. That's a great pick, Jake. And kind of leading us into the next one, I'm surprised nobody mentioned this team, but maybe this is why. Robert Williams out 8 to 12 weeks. Try. how do you think that will affect the Celtics season? I mean, it's definitely a good player. The Celtics will definitely lack size in the paint. So... It's uh, next man up, I guess. What about you, Jake? Um, well, he's he's not up for the entire season, so I think that obviously at first, like our defense is gonna be kind of not not the best, but I think eventually when he comes back, we'll just be able to like just figure it out, and I think we'll be fine. Yeah, I agree. I think we'll we'll lack a lot defensively, but I think uh, Al Horford could definitely step up, or some other guys. Maybe we'll sign. Maybe we'll sign like a, a Dwayne Howard or something. That's <laughs> like the Robert Williams role. We'll see. We'll see. Still a lot of time left to the season. Any yeah. thoughts, Meet? Um, we don't really like know the severity of his injury yet, so it's just like, like, but got, overall, like, he got it's still. He got what? He got surgery. Oh, he's like, he, shopping. He, next he's, he's, he's confirmed for eight to twelve weeks. We actually kind of know how long. Oh, uh, I before. mean, like, well, he next was saying shopping. earlier, we don't know the severity. Right. It could, it could get worse. Yeah, you don't yeah, know. That is true. That is yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, overall, it affects the team. That is true. Yeah. So, all right, kind of leading us into a, a different direction. We're gonna head over to the NFL world. Uh, Charlie, who do you think will win the Super Bowl? No, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna say Eagles. I'm gonna go the Eagles. They're playing. They're playing pretty well right now. The you know, the Chiefs lost to the Colts this week, so, I mean, they are they're obviously have their weaknesses, but I think I'm going to go Eagles. They're a good team. Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Miles Sanders is actually running the ball well this year, so good all-around team, good defense. What about you, Jay? I'm going to go with the Bills. Yeah, okay. I just, I just, that's just a solid pick. That's yeah. all. I agree. I was going to say the Bills, but, you know, maybe if I had to go a different direction – uh, maybe I'll go with, with like the Buccaneers. You know, you can't you can't count out Tom yeah, Brady. Yeah. He's, he's him. Yeah. Year twenty, whatever. He's like ninety years old. He's still going strong. I don't think you can count the Buccaneers out. They got weapons all around. Yeah, no, I gotta agree. Uh, the Bucks, the absolute unit in the force. Like they're <laughs> they're they're just they're shredding it, man. Like they're, yeah. they're they're easily gonna win the Super Bowl. Yeah, a team that actually wasn't mentioned was. Our hometown Patriots, partly because um, Mac Jones this week 
went down with uh, what's rumored to be a high ankle sprain. Jake, how do you think this will impact the Patriots' rest of the season? Well, we already had a really bad start. So not like a really bad, but we already had like kind of like a slow start. And now like our quarterback's out for we have no idea how long. Whew. Probably not going to have the greatest season, which kind of stinks, but it is what it is. Yeah, I would agree. You know, uh, one thing the Patriots kind of lack in is uh, like the quarterback depth. Like uh, Brian Hoyer, we saw him last year, wasn't that good. If we're being honest, yeah. I don't, I don't think he could lead us to a win. What See, about you, Charlie? Well, I think Brian Hoyer is their only option because Bailey is not ready to play in the NFL at all. What about you, mate? Nah, I gotta go with what Charlie said, man. Like, you know, he's not ready. He's not like. <clears throat> like he's not, he's not, he's not that like well prepared. He's not that like experienced. You need experience in the force. He does yeah. need experience. Yeah, I agree. All right. Well, thank you, thank you for watching our sports show. Catch us next time. Thank you for watching the first edition of SHS this month. We hope to see you on the second edition.